Who would win in a fight? Mark Ruffalo's Hulk versus Edward Norton's Hulk versus Eric Bana's Hulk. And throw in Lou Ferrigno's Hulk in there too, why not? That's a lot of Hulks. And speaking of all those Hulks, did you know that the gigantic green rage monster has had an abundance of different personalities and character traits over the years that has made him one of the most fascinating characters in Marvel Comics? But what version of the Hulk is the strongest? Well, that's what I'm here today to discuss. Join me as I break down every major version we've seen of the Hulk, the character's strengths and weaknesses, and whether or not we could see these characters in live action. Let's get started right now. Okay, I want to talk about Professor Hulk. No, not the version from the comics who is actually pretty rad, but the version of the character we saw in the MCU because I have a serious bone to pick. Look, both Bruce Banner and Hulk were on one of the best character trajectories of anyone in the MCU. Bruce started the MCU scared and on the run because he couldn't control the other guy and did whatever he could in order to keep him locked away. Then, over a few more movies, we saw what happens when Hulk totally loses control like in Age of Ultron. And then the Hulk personality took over completely for a few years and spent his time as a gladiator on Sakaar, with Banner not realizing how much time had passed as evidence by him thinking Ultron was still around after Thor coaxed Banner back out. Then there was the plot point of Banner being afraid of turning into the Hulk again because it meant Banner might be gone forever. But he decided to take that risk anyway by jumping in and making a huge impact, literally, in fighting the giant wolf Fenris. Then Infinity War happened and the Hulk personality refused to come out after getting his butt kicked by Thanos. The Russo brothers have said that it wasn't because Hulk was scared but because he didn't want to fight Banner's battles anymore, which uh, sure. Infinity War ended with Banner telling Hulk that the two of them had major issues to work out, but do we see it? No. Endgame had a lot going on, so they skipped past any dramatic character resolution for a sight gag that reveals that Banner and Hulk had merged together, combining the brain and the brawn. But there's a lot of problems with this. For one, where was the Hulk personality? The writers seemed to ignore that the Hulk was his own person with his own thoughts and feelings, and you think he would just be okay being basically completely erased? No, sorry, I just got so angry all the time. Hulk always, always angry. It would be one thing if it was said that Banner could still hear Hulk's voice or let Hulk take over now and then, but nope, goodbye Hulk. And you know what my big issue is? The Hulk is generally a gigantic rage monster who gets stronger and more powerful the angrier he gets. But by having Banner's mind in Hulk's body, it completely hinders his strength. Remember the scene where they go back in time and Hulk has to pretend to be his earlier self and pretends to half-heartedly smash things? Where's the anger gonna come from? Imagine a scenario where Endgame picked up with Hulk still not coming out and Banner being on his own for a while. But then when it comes time to snap the homemade Infinity Gauntlet, the Hulk persona takes over and wants to do it in order to be the hero, and because he knows the body can take it. I think that would have been better than what we got, but I digress. So as we all probably know, the Hulk was originally supposed to be gray, but then due to ink problems, it looked more green and Stan Lee ended up liking that more. Can you imagine a world where the Hulk was gray all the time? I think he'd lose some of his sparkle, don't you? The green totally makes him stand out. But just like a lot of things in Marvel Comics, writers ended up retconning the whole gray issue and making it canon. It was written so that, yes, the Grey Hulk from the very beginning was the very first color the Hulk ever was, but then eventually the Green Hulk that we all know and love eventually took over, and always comes out instead because it's stronger. Though that means there is a Grey Hulk persona somewhere deep inside Banner, and let me tell you, it's one of the wildest versions. Later, comic writers would tweak the Grey Hulk persona even more, making it a side effect of all the abuse that Bruce Banner suffered in his childhood, and manifesting itself as a Grey version of the Hulk who would wind up being being a tough guy Las Vegas enforcer. How wild is that? This version is like the guy who'd make you sleep with the fishes if you crossed in the wrong way. He calls himself Joe Fixit, which I'm guessing he saw on the side of a local plumber's truck or something. This version is technically more intelligent than the original Hulk and is often tricky, manipulative, and doesn't really care about people because he's morally ambiguous. That's his whole shtick. And although he has a solid intelligence level, he's not as strong as the other version of the Hulk. Sure, he still possesses that whole the matter he gets, the stronger he becomes ability, but it has happens at a much slower rate than his green counterpart. See, I wouldn't have minded if the MCU made it so that when Banner and Hulk combined and became Professor Hulk, that the Hulk personality got split from Banner and that version could become a version of Grey Hulk. How would the MCU's Hulk process things now that he's a little smarter but also not as strong? That would have been awesome to see, right? 
Okay, this next entry is a fun one. Yes, seeing Bruce Banner hulk out and smash stuff is a lot of fun, but every so often the comics get a little weird and create hybrid characters because, uh, why not? Which brings me to a few of the funniest versions of Hulk that I can think of. Hulk Pool and Spider Hulk. Yeah, you can kind of guess who those combinations are. Let's start with Hulk Pool. In the comic series titled Hulked Out Heroes, a gamma-powered Deadpool is sent back in time to eliminate the original Deadpool because of all the bad stuff that Wade had done. But while traveling through time, Hulkpool gets a little lost. He first gets sent back to the year 1717, where he becomes a pirate under a Captain Blackbeard version of the Thing, which is just awesome to think about. They then take a few more jaunts throughout time, including to the Old West and to World War II, where Hulkpool ends up saving Bucky and helping Captain America and Bucky hunt down and eliminate both Hitler and the Red Skull. After that, he accidentally stops the origins of a few Marvel heroes, including the original Hulk, and then finally meets the OG Deadpool and eliminates him, completing his mission. Like, I know What If would never adapt this storyline, but please, please, please can it adapt to this storyline? But I'm not quite done with the hybrid characters, because there's also Spider-Hulk. This one isn't a Bruce Banner version of the Hulk, but hey, Deadpool got really mad at me when I didn't include his best friend Spidey in the same entry as him, and I don't want Deadpool mad at me, okay? Spider-Hulk is a version of Spider-Man that was zapped with energy from the Hulk, and when Spider-Man next got angry, he turned into Spider-Hulk. And I just want to say, I think Hulk and Spidey make a powerful combination. Sure, Spider- Spider-Hulk loses intelligence, which is kind of Spider-Man's big thing, but it's funny to think of Spider-Man's dexterity and agility paired with the brute force of the Hulk. What if there was a version of Bruce Banner and the Hulk that was just fed up with both Bruce Banner and the Hulk? Well, that's where Doc Green comes in. Thanks to exposure to the extremist virus, this new version of the Hulk was able to manifest itself and cause a good amount of damage. Doc Green hates to be called either Hulk or Banner, which probably represents some deep-seated self-esteem issues from Banner, and Doc Green set out on a quest to depower all the Gamma Mutates, not caring if they were good guys or bad guys. He just wanted them all gone. This version is similar to the Professor Hulk in terms of intelligence and strength, but he definitely has more of an edge when it comes to getting what he wants. So the moral of the story is don't take extremist kids, it's bad for you. Dot Green's ending is both kind of funny and tragic. So Dot Green suffered from losing his intelligence over time, and while he was smart, he made an AI duplicate of his personality. But then that AI duplicate saw that Dot Green's intelligence wasn't as smart anymore and then turned against him. Anyway, I think a Dot Green would be interesting to see in live action because so much of Bruce Banner's and the Hulk's arc has been about them battling with each other, so it would be fascinating to see another personality who's sick of both of them rise up and take control. Sometimes it's just hard to beat the original, right? The standard version of Hulk that we all know and love has gone on some incredible journeys, both in the comics and the MCU. The OG Hulk is normally a gigantic rage monster who gets stronger the angrier he gets. So by that rationale, if there's a villain who keeps fighting him and making him more mad, it's only a matter of time before Hulk will start to overpower his opponent. It's why in the MCU, the top villains really have to knock him out fast or else he'll eventually overcome everything. Take the Thanos fight, for instance in Infinity War. That opening scene saw the Mad Titan deliver a brutal beatdown to our Hulk after a brilliant introduction by Loki. We have a Hulk. But we know that the Hulk only gets stronger the angrier he gets, so I really think if that fight had gone on longer, the Hulk could have won. Same with his Thor fight from Thor Ragnarok. Thor knocks him out with lightning, but given time, the Hulk would have just gotten so furious that lightning might have just bounced off him. Is that true? Well, I guess now we'll never know. Since the OG Hulk persona has a lot of the same powers as a lot of Hulks on this list, I'll take this time to ask, which Hulk do you think has the best design? Mark Ruffalo, Ed Norton, or Eric Bana? I'll say now that Ed Norton Norton's design is actually really cool, and I wish they would have kept that a bit more rather than slowly turning the Hulk into Mark Ruffalo, but that just might be me. So with the MCU now pivoting to explore the multiverse, it's only a matter of time before we see different versions of some of our favorite characters. Some of them will be heroic, others will be villains, and some will be downright terrifying. That's the case with the ultimate version of the Hulk, who hails from Earth 1610. The backstory of this character has shades of the OG version, but I think it's overall much darker. Basically, that universe's first super soldier, Nick Fury, gathered genetic engineers to attempt to recreate the super soldier serum. A more flawed version of Banner thought he perfected a version of the serum, but didn't want to share it because he thought he wouldn't get credit. 
so he took it himself and it resulted in him hulking out. Then later he took things a step farther by mixing the super soldier serum with the Hulk serum and turning himself into an even worse version of a Grey Hulk. Now this version has proven to not be as strong as his other universe counterparts, but it should be noted that the Ultimate Hulk is way more vicious. He's not just angry all the time, he's unhinged, sadistic, ruthless, and even cannibalistic. So yeah, if I had to choose between meeting the OG Hulk or a cannibal Hulk in a dark alley somewhere, then yeah, I'm choosing the OG Hulk every time. The Devil Hulk is the darker, more sinister version of the Hulk. Basically, how it's explained is that if the normal Hulk is Bruce Banner's inner rage, then Devil Hulk is Banner's inner evil. He's a truly monstrous version that hopefully never gets unleashed on an unsuspecting public. Right off the bat, he's just as powerful as the regular Hulk, but also comes with a few nifty upgrades like increased intelligence, some elemental powers, and even terrakinesis, which is the ability to manipulate terrain and rock formation. He's also just downright terrifying to look at. Eventually, this version of the Hulk was locked away forever and it made way for the Immortal Hulk. This version is actually content with waiting inside of Banner and his transformation is limited to nighttime. The Immortal Hulk can also release massive amounts of gamma blasts capable of destroying everything in a nearby area as well as having the ability to drain gamma from other gamma mutates. He can also sense liars because it wouldn't be a Hulk iteration without some weird random power, right? There's one version of the Hulk that fans have been clamoring for for a long time, and that's Planet Hulk. Mark Ruffalo's version of the character has been incredibly well received by fans that for a long time there was a push to give him his own solo movie. Now, complicated rights issues stop that from ever happening, which is why Hulk is always a side character in movies, but if there was one story that fans would want to see adapted in the MCU, it would be Planet Hulk. In the comics, Hulk is deemed too dangerous to stay on planet anymore, so like any good problem solver, the heroes of Earth decided to put Hulk on a rocket and fly him somewhere else. Of course, things don't go well and the rocket gets knocked off course, landing on Sakaar instead of the abandoned planet that was the original destination. From there, the Hulk has to work his way up as a gladiator in the rings until he eventually overthrows the whole system and gains control himself. Now, there's two things with this. For one, the Planet Hulk persona is really just OG Hulk, but this whole storyline is probably Hulk's best, so I thought it was worth the mention. And two, yes, we technically already saw this storyline play out in some regard in Thor Ragnarok, and while it was nice to see Gladiator Hulk, it's kind of unfortunate to have seen it all through Thor's eyes, right? And the side storyline means we'll never never see a proper adaptation of Planet Hulk in the MCU, and that's kind of a bummer. Maybe a what-if episode down the line? Who knows? Don't you just love alternate futures in comics? I do. It allows for things to get quite wild. And one of my favorite and most powerful alternate versions of Hulk is Maestro. Basically, this version lives in a time where nuclear destruction has wiped out just about everyone, including mostly all the heroes and villains. But hey, when life gives you lemons, you make lemonade, right? The only one that the nuclear war didn't hurt was this version of the Hulk, who only absorbed the radiation and it made him even stronger. And he's not just all brawn either. He's also incredibly intelligent and rules over a land called Dystopia. But really, the reason Maestro Hulk is so high on this list is because of his rockin' white beard. Come on, devastatingly powerful and a thick white beard? It's like a reverse Santa, kinda. Maybe. Anyway, you want to hear something cool about Maestro? He was initially defeated after he was sent back in time at the precise moment when Bruce Banner turns into the Hulk, and the explosion that blasts Banner with gamma radiation is powerful enough to incinerate Maestro. Real circle of life stuff, you know? So I already have mentioned Planet Hulk, but I specifically saved the most powerful version of the Hulk for the end, and it directly relates to Planet Hulk. So by the end of that event, Planet Hulk is happy on his planet with a wife and an unborn son. But then the ship that brought the Hulk to Sakaar in the first place explodes and everyone that Planet Hulk loves is gone just like that. He's so upset that he absorbs the entire planet of Sakaar's radiation and becomes World Breaker Hulk. And can you guess what he does? That's right, he breaks worlds. He becomes capable of splitting entire planets with his incredible cosmic power and then sets his sights on revenge. Thinking it was Earth's mightiest heroes who planted that bomb. In his absolute rampage, he takes out everyone, including Professor X, Doctor Strange, Black Bolt, Tony Stark, etc. The only one he didn't just wreck was Namor, who specifically voted against sending Hulk away in the first place. So how powerful is he? Well, his stomps cause earthquakes across continents, but even when he's just standing still, he's radiating enough energy to rattle the Earth's core. It truly is the most powerful Hulk of all time, and it's one who I desperately wish we we could see in the MCU in some capacity. 
This video didn't even mention She-Hulk. She's an exciting character on her own, and she looks to have a bright future ahead of her. Will she step up and be the future Avengers powerful heavy hitter now that the OG Hulk is a bit out of commission? Only time will tell, but that sounds kind of cool, don't you think?